guess what? This is Law & Order SVU Season 4, Episode 8. Waste. We open up and Benson and Stabler are in a busy-ass ER. They're looking for a Stephanie Rollins. Uh, hello? Yeah, we don't have her. What are you talking? She's a rape victim? Well, here's your problem. She's not in ER. She's over in ICU. Up over to ICU and pull back the curtain. There's Stephanie Rollins. Good God. Benson's like, well, he didn't mess up her face. She's as pretty as ever, because that matters. No defensive wounds either. Hmm. Let's check her chart. Dude with a stethoscope walks in and says, she's got pneumonia, but she's finally almost out of the woods. Well, who called the rape in? Stethoscope guy did. Why? Because Stephanie was transferred over from Mount Castle Rehab. Oh, did she overdose? Nope. A car accident. Earlier tonight? No, like a year ago. Okay, stethoscope, dude. Spit it out. What's happening? Stephanie got in a car accident. She's been in a coma for like a year. They ran some tests because of the pneumonia and found out she is six weeks pregnant. Benson and Stabler are like, oh. Jump back from the intro and parents are here and they're pissed. How could this have happened? We didn't pray hard enough. They say they know who's responsible. It's David. Who's David? Well, according to mom, it's who Stephanie was living with. The wreck was his fault. After she went to Newcastle, he tried to kill her. So we catch up with David. And he's like, what the hell? I never tried to kill her. Yeah. This dude that she was living with, they were living together for like six years. They were going to get married. They were totally in love. David says that they told each other everything and he knows that Stephanie definitely wouldn't want to be just existing in a coma. For the record, me either. Pull that plug. Give me like two weeks and just Pull it. Munch is feeling like a real butthole today. Hey, David, how's your sex life lately? He's like, that's sick. Denies the rape. Finn's like, well, you're the one who put her in the vegetable crisper. She's Finn. It was my bachelor party. Guys dragged me to a strip club. They all got smashed, so I called her to come and pick me up. And you insisted on driving, even though you'd had a few? Nope. She never made it. A truck hit her on the way there. Oh crap, is this gonna be a super sad one? So Munch and Finn like rule David out. Kraken thinks this must be an inside job and asks his BFF Cabot, what would it take to do a blanket DNA test over the whole facility? Um, a constitutional amendment? <laughs> Craigan's like, yeah, but we don't have to process them all. We just see who wants to and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're back at Newcastle, and the nurse says that the only two dudes who worked with Stephanie are her hot-ass physical therapist and her neurologist, Dr. Mandel. We're going to start with Dr. Mandel. They walk in, and he's currently in with a totally unconscious patient. Don't you need a nurse present when you're in here? He says, well, that role is to protect doctors from getting accusations thrown at them, and she can't throw any. <laughs> well, what about Stephanie? She's got an accusation in the oven. Dr. Mandel says that Stephanie's parents are pains in the ass. <laughs> Big surprise. Basically, they keep making him run a bunch of tests even though nothing changes. And you know what? He's okay with donating some of his DNA. Meanwhile, Munch and Finn track down that cute little physical therapist. Says he does exercises with Stephanie three times a week and he's got a special coma regimen that he can do them in their bed. Phrasing. What about DNA? He's already given his. He is first in line. Okie dokie, but have you seen this guy before? Show him a picture of David. He's like, yeah. David told physical therapist guy his side of the story and PT feels bad for him. So what exactly was he doing when you saw him? Camera zooms in sleeping in her bed. Oh, really, David? What the fuck? Why are you lying? You said you hadn't seen her in months. David says, I had to. If her dumb parents found out, they'd have me arrested. Obviously, he'll give us DNA because you know what? I want to find out who the fuck did this as much as you do. So we jump back to the precinct and the teams pass around a big old box of donuts talking about how the fiance David is still at the top of the list. We have a lively conversation about consent. A couple of the comments are a little problematic. But boy, do those donuts look good. Just then, Benson gets a phone call. Stephanie's mom is freaking out. Try and stay calm. Turns out this bitch went to mass and when she came back, Stephanie was gone. She didn't get up and walk away. Nope. She was transferred back to the rehab center. <gasps> Where she got raped? Why would they do that? We get back to Newcastle and mom's going full Karen on the front desk staff. Stephanie's in a procedure room and when Benson and Stabler go in, they find out that she's in there to terminate the pregnancy. And I know this is supposed to be some huge ass moment, but obviously she's a rape victim in a coma that can't consent to any of this 
and carrying a baby could kill her. So I have a feeling that super Catholic-y Catholic mom won't be happy with this. We're back from a commercial break and Benson and Sabler are pissed at the doctor and the doctor's pissed at Benson and Sabler. I understand that you interfered with a medical procedure. Does that doctor speak for cover up? See, they think that this doctor is trying to get rid of the evidence, but the doctor's like, her life is in fucking danger, you idiot. He's profoundly incapacitated. It'd be medical malpractice to let this pregnancy continue. Oh, so you decide to play God? No, we're doing our job. Uh, oh, well, you didn't get the parents' consent. Guess again. Mom was hysterical, but dad signed the consent paper. Now the parents are pissing each other. Her daughter was raped and this pregnancy could kill her. An abortion goes against everything we've ever believed in. But this is different. It's our Stephanie. It's always different when it happens to you, isn't it? Stabler takes dad aside. Let's go talk dad to dad. But when dad says that he comes on his lunch break to like visit his daughter, Stabler jumps right in to ask him for a DNA sample and immediately gets punched in the face. We're back at the precinct and Stabler's got a big old ice pack on his face. Turns out mom and dad's Catholicism went out and they're not terminating the pregnancy. Stabler lets it slip to munch that Benson was a product of her mom's rape. Turn around and there's Olivia. Hi! It's fine. Same thing happened to me, morning after pill, no questions. So here's the thing. We're gonna have to wait a while for paternity tests to figure out who the father is. But in the meantime, there's a couple of dudes who didn't want to give DNA. Let's check them out. One's a conspiracy theorist who's now best friends with Munch. One's a hypochondriac janitor. And the last guy that they talked to works in the morgue. They run him and find out that he's got a complaint made against him. So they check out the chick who made the complaint. She's a sex worker, but she doesn't want to be implicated. Okay, so there's this guy and he offers me some chicken and then we go up to the hotel to eat the chicken. We get it, he's a John. He had a little performance anxiety. So he put ice in the tub and told her he couldn't do it unless she really seemed dead. Uh, we check out the funeral home where Wesley was recently fired from. Turns out they installed video surveillance because there was some theft going on and they caught Wesley on film. Caught him doing what? The late Mrs. Ferguson. <laughs> we bring Wesley in and they are busting his chops like what? Especially Olivia. Hey Wesley, let's watch this tape of you groping a dead person. Don't worry, it's over really quickly. Oh, you want some water? Heavy on the ice? Huang and Craigan are on the other side of the glass. And Huang's like, yeesh, Olivia. He's a necrophiliac. His greatest fear is to be judged by women. Why don't you take it fucking easy? Craigan really thinks this is their dude. But Huang's like, no dude. He really thinks that they're looking for somebody else. First of all, they have zero evidence connecting Wesley with Stephanie. So Cabot's gonna go ahead and just charge him with necrophilia, which is like one year max. We're at Wesley's arraignment. He pleads not guilty to sexual misconduct. And when Cabot tries to get him remanded, your honor, he's the prime suspect in the rape of a comatose patient. Opposing counsel's like, excuse me, there are zero charges for that. Well, there will be in like two months. Nice try. Judge can't take that into consideration. Boom, bail set at $5,000 and the parents are pissed. Why couldn't you charge him with Stephanie's rape? This mom is so annoying. Well, we need fetal cells to tell the paternity, but since you wanted to keep the pregnancy, we can't get them. Normally you'd have to wait for week 14 to do this procedure. Amnesiansis. Amnesia, amnesiasis, no, amnesiasis, whatever the fuck it is, because I can't pronounce it. <laughs> but Huang knows another procedure where you can figure out blood type. So science, 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 they do that. And did it work? Yup. We can't tell who the father is, but whoever it is has type B blood. That excludes the custodian. It excludes Wesley the necrophiliac. It excludes the fiance. It excludes everybody, except one person. Guess who that person is? Dr. Mandel. When we confront him, he's like, uh, do you know how many people have type B blood? That's a really good point, actually. But just then, Huang walks in all sassy with a bunch of information. Some fascinating results from the gynecological examinations, doctor. What did you find, Huang? Scarring. From rape? Nope. From recent abortions. Holy shit, is this guy just going around raping people and aborting all the evidence? If it was just that easy, we'd be further into the episode. The team keeps doing all this research and finds out that Dr. Mandel does Parkinson's research. There's another doctor, Dr. Garrison, at the same lab, and they catch up with her. Stabler's like, how does it work? He rapes them, you scrape them. And this mousy bitch is adamant that the doctor does not rape anybody. We're doing amazing research, but there's some bureaucratic red tape. She asks them if they know who Davis Langley is. Holy shit, that super rich dude? Yep, 
He's rich as fuck. He also has Parkinson's disease. So apparently George Bush put a whole bunch of restrictions on stem cell research, but this is for the greater good. What's the greater good of women getting raped? Camera zooms in. They weren't raped. They were inseminated. Oh, holy shit. Okay, Dr. Mandel, break this shit down for us. Stephanie's parents signed a form allowing experimental procedure. I did everything in my power to bring her back. He says that literally all of this is legal. That cannot be right right? Then we get this guy's motivation. Do you have any idea what Parkinson's does to a body? I watched my own dad waste away. That's why I became a neurologist. So here's the moral conundrum of the episode, right? It's all about advancements in science. It could save thousands of people. But to hell with all these women in a coma. Don't you get it? Medical advances have a price. The first 10 bone marrow transplants ended in death. Now thousands of people have been saved. So you and pregnant girls against their will. What will? They barely have a pulse. I'm just over here like eating my popcorn because I can see both sides. So Cabot's got basically nothing, but she goes in front of a grand jury anyway, basically with her dick in her hand. Grand jury says yes to Mandel and Garrison, no to Langley. Jump to the trial and insufferable Mrs. Rollins is up on the stand. She's in a coma. Has she ever woken up? No. I see. So she definitely could not have agreed to being impregnated and then having an abortion. Then Cabot's new defense attorney lover stands up and gives it a go. Your daughter was a lovely person. Uh, I see on her driver's license that she was a fucking organ donor. I see where he's going. And she was a teacher for special needs kids. Don't you think she'd want to use the rest of her life to help as many people as possible? Good point, cutie. Suddenly, there's a surprise witness. It's Langley, the old rich guy. He gets on the stand and he is a medical mess. <sighs> I don't feel like I should actually impersonate him. He says six years ago, his arm stopped swinging and he is walking. Now he's too afraid to even take a drink of water because he could choke and die. He says he can't control his bowel. He can't brush his own teeth. We scan the jury and everybody's pretty horrified. And when it's Cabot's turn to cross-examine Laylee, he says it was flat out his idea to use comatose patients to get stem cells. Mr. Langley, you know you just admitted to being an accessory to crime. And he says, young lady, look at me. Prison is nothing compared to the hell I'm living. Let me help millions of people. Oof, okay. So we jump to a dark room at the precinct and we find out that the two doctors got off with a slap on the wrist. Probably won't even see jail time. And just then, hysterical Mrs. Rollins comes tornadoing into the room. You have to stop him. Ugh, you again. Stop who? What? Langley. This motherfucker just filed for custody of Stephanie's baby. Because Cabot just established in court that he was the biological father. Benson, who's a little slow on the draw, just like, why would he do that? Out of guilt? Cabot's like, no dummy, survival. Because along with the baby comes an umbilical cord that is full of stem cells. Screen goes black, dick wool. And that was Law and Order SVU season four. I did it again. Season four, episode eight. Jum jum. <laughs>